The Honda Africa Twin. What do I think to it? Well, you know, recently that I tried out the Triumph Tiger 1200 XRT. And people have asked me, can you do a comparison to that? Well, no, I can't. And there's a reason for it. This, you can't compare with any other adventure bike that I know of. Why do I say that? Well, basically, I think a lot of the adventure bikes today are sports tourers put into an adventure style frame. The Tiger is smooth, it will cuddle you, it will make you feel safe, there is nothing unexpected. The Africa Twin? Well, that's little devil whispering on, whispering on your shoulder saying, shall we dance in the rain? And it then from across the room shouts at you, come on, we've got walls to knock down. It's a beast of a bike. It takes getting used to. You're not gonna jump on an Africa Twin and feel comfortable straight away. That's just not going to happen. The DCT version has automatic. It also has little flippy paddles so that you can up, you know, change up and down with just your thumb and your forefinger. It has a chain drive. Now that is a bit of a disappointment as far as I'm concerned. They should have gone a bit further and put a shaft drive on it. And I have to say, I've not done any research to find out why there isn't a shaft drive. I'm sure if there is a reason, you will let me know. But a thousand cc's, two funnels of fun. The engine, well, that's been cast out of granite. And inside there are two blacksmith's anvils for pistons. There's a blacksmith on top with the biggest hammer you've ever seen, bashing the hell out of them. Because the sound is fantastic. It's an incredible machine. It's got the best riding position I've ever had as far as a bike is concerned. Because there are 920 millimeters on the base and 940 millimeters, the seat height goes up to at its highest position. And that's the highest of anything in its class as far as I've been able to find out. For me, it's six foot four with a 35 inside leg. It is absolutely perfect. I get no knee pain whatsoever. Once you find out that you can change gear automatically, you'll never want to go back to a manual. I love it. Absolutely love it. One of the things I don't like, and I guess that's because, well, it hasn't got an electric screen. Why hasn't it got an electric screen? I want a little knob to fiddle and move it up and down. And I want to lower it. So when there's people in cars, oh, look, he's moving the screen. After 10 days, I don't miss an electric screen, but this screen here, it's a bit small for me. I need a larger one and a wider one, a taller one. Because once you're doing <coughs> 70 mile an hour, you do get a bit of buffering. The panniers, 500 quid for panniers. The cheap and nasty, my opinion. There's a reason, no doubt, why the plastic no doubt to give a little bit less weight to the back end of the bike because I spoke to somebody earlier today who's got a generation one or a first generation one of these and he's changed the suspension to aftermarket. There's been an upgrade on the wheels as well, they're now stainless steel spokes because the first generation they were rusting and Honda had to replace the wheels under warranty. Miles per gallon, well miles per gallon you're getting around about 50 miles to the gallon so it's good as far as that's concerned. It's got a big tank, you fill the Tiger up, it's about 20 quid. 
you fill this up, it's about 30 quid. So it's a bigger tank, but it gives you longevity in between. It doesn't give you many more miles, in other words, you know. Let's say the Tiger does 200, this tank will do 300. But you're paying 50% more if you get my drift. That's one of the things that I do like about it, the bigger tank. The present it has. It's phenomenal, the present it has. I've had more people come up to me on this bike and go, Ooh, that bike looks nice, than I've ever done on any other bike. It has a presence. The sound has people looking at it from the cars. People walking down the street look, turn around to look at it. They want to know what's coming. That makes me feel quite good. Could I go around the world on this? Yeah, damn right I could go around the world on this. It's cheaper than the Tiger. There's a reason it doesn't have the gadgets, but the engine does have the settings. There's numerous settings you can find. If you want to know about them, look online. You can do, there's a button to press, you can go on gravel or loose surfaces and there's ones you can go on ride and there's another setting you can change it if you wish to your own settings which is, which is pretty cool. So it lacks, it, it lacks little refinements but that's a reason why it's £12,000 and the Tiger is now £17,000 brand new. Honda dealers will do a deal with you as well, I am absolutely convinced of that. Would I choose between the two? I right, it's mentioned right at the beginning. I can't. The Tiger is smoother. It, it's more refined. This one, well, as I mentioned before, it's horn from granite and there's anvils for pistons. It depends on what you're looking for. If I came out of my house on the morning and found one of these parked outside, I'm gonna smile. There is no doubt about that. I am gonna smile. Nice riding position, the most comfortable riding position I've ever had. So the choice is up to you. Get yourself to a Honda dealer, have yourself a test ride, you might be converted to Honda Africa Twin.